Hello and welcome, it's Howard from HDS Electrical and today we're wiring up a light switch. So, uh, we've been left some nicely coiled cables by the plasterer who also, someone's cut out boxes. Um, not the greatest because they missed the hole by a bit, but anyway, it is what it is. The joys will probably get blamed for it as per usual. So, what we've got this has a cable going to a fan isolator that they've also not managed to cut the box out for. But anyway, so we've got a three core going to our fan, we've got a switch line, and we've got a feed. <coughs> feed is your power in, switch line does our two lights, and the fan isolator will go to the fan isolator which goes to the fan, gives power and switch to the fan. So these are written on, but what we also do, what I prefer to do is put two different marks. So we've got three lines for us. These are our marks, don't steal our marks. Is a feed and across is a switch line. So you notice we've got cross cross, there's a faint feed there, it wants to be a bit deeper ideally, but then even if the writing gets plastered over, wipes off, gets painted over, disappears, you can still see the marks. So it's just handy. You might lose, if you've got multiple switch lines, like big kitchen setups, you might lose which switch line, but at least you can get all the feeds and go from there and actually just trial and error put the switch lines in one at a time once you've got everything connected and see what it's powering. But handy technique, I'd recommend everyone do it. And it's quicker than marking, just snap, snap. So I'm gonna start by going to the furthest corner and cutting off a centimeter. Now what I don't wanna do is cut off my marking and forget which cable does which. So I'm gonna start with my switch line I'm going to strip it back and you might have your own methods of remembering and to be honest sometimes I change but in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip a little bit of the switch line so I'm going to remember that one is my switch line so quite simple as there's only two here keeps it easy so now I'm going to strip up my feed as per usual, nice and simple, get that ready, da, da, ding. actually a bit of an awkward one because we've got such a deep switch, but it is what it is, and I'm going to now do my fan, this one's going to be nice and simple to remember because it's a three core, so we got live switch line and neutral and of course earth and live gives permanent live so the fan keeps running after you switch it off switch line is what turns it on with the light switch the switch line turns it on so now we're going to get all our neutrals together or all our earths i start with the earths I like to move all the other cables out of the way so it's nicely dressed. Make sure the cables aren't crossing where possible. I'm gonna put these into the earth block just because it's simple. So I've angled them where they wanna be, nice and neat, cut them all the same length. Now I'm gonna earth sleeve them up. Now I've got those three ready, I'm going to get a little bit of uh, tape or earth sleeving because I also will need to identify which cables which because they're non-standard colours. Sometimes do it with switches as well but not in this case the way it's been wired. I need to make sure people know the grey is the neutral and the black is the switch line. I'm going to do that with tape it's easy, you can do it with tape or with um, sleeving, but it's quite simple for me with tape, stops it falling off and I've always got tape kicking around, so there we 
go. That's that one labelled up. It's not going to fall off like with uh, like sleeving. Sleeving's nice, but it does annoy me when you're trying to wire a massive switch and your sleeving keeps falling off. So, a little bit of tape. Jobs are good ones. So now we know they're going to be our neutral and our switch line. So, I'm now going to put my earths just in the earth block in the back. It's a plastic switch we're going to be fitting, so no harm in worrying about it needing earth because it just doesn't need earth, basically. So, I'm going to poke them in. Quite often, I'll use a Wago and then <coughs> just do a fly lead because um, it can be fiddly depending on how many you've got going in here because they like to jump out especially when it's quite deep but saves a way go saves another connection we're saving the planet one way go at a time yeah right so that in there is sweet so this is our switch line we're now going to do our neutrals I'm going to bend them where I want them I'm going to get them in that top corner of the box nice and neat a little bit of slack to play with so I've bent them I've cut them all the same length straighten that one a fraction to look neater straighten that one Pop on. Oh, Waco. No, Waco. Right. So, finally, we have our switch lines. Switch line for the light, switch line to turn the fan on, permanent live coming in permanent live to the fan. So I'm gonna get my Detta switch, which is like the socket we did in another video, not the brand we use. Actually, to be honest, feels quite nice. Yeah, not too bad. Not a brand I've ever fitted before seen it occasionally, I recognise the logo from a few things where I've changed, never ever worked with it, but can't say I dislike it, so they've just given us one game switches. It's been so long since I've had a one way switch, because we just fit two way switches everywhere. So you've just got common and L1. Permanent feeds go in common, our switch lines to the light, to the fan, go in L1. So I'm going to look at that, coming on top, L1 at the bottom, so I'm going to get a nice bend on the L1, so that's going to go in L1, this is going to be my common, I've put a little bend like that, so when I push the switch back, it's not going to put any stress on the connections, it's already kind of got a bit of memory for how it's going to go back as. Now, if you're doing one cable, you want to double the ends over, 100%, and I'll make a judgment when I have a look at this if I want to double the ends over together. If you're doing two, it's not so bad. Sometimes you don't have space if you're doing two to double them over. There we go. I'm going to do the bottom one first, specifically, because then I can fold it down. If I do it the other way, just little things you pick up as you go. If I do it the other way, then i got to fold it up 
look underneath or bend it in lots of ways which isn't good for keeping the cables neat or putting stress on them. So that's the way I like to do it. Now we go R2 just in the top just like that. Pinch it with your finger, little terminal and that is our switch ready to go back. Perfect, we've got plenty of slack if we need to pull it out. Goes back nice and easy, no stress, no pressure. There's that, so now cameraman needs you to fit the next five.